Okay, let's get this started. Here's where we're going today. We have four methods of proving triangles congruent. Uh, I told you there's five total. We'll reveal the fifth one Thursday. Okay, I'm not gonna go over the fifth one today. What I wanna show you today is what's after proving triangles congruent. Okay, and I know this is gonna be bad for some of you, but I'm making these proofs one more step. So after I say two triangles are congruent, what's the next step then? All right, what can I do? You guys already know that from the first day we did congruent polygons. If I tell you two triangles are congruent, what do I know about all the corresponding angles and sides now? If the triangles are congruent, the corresponding angles and sides are also congruent as well. And that's where we're going today. You guys are gonna prove me two triangles are congruent, then I'm gonna ask you to prove corresponding parts congruent. All right, before we do that though, quick reminder, Triangle WIS congruent to triangle EUP. I do not need to provide you with a diagram. You should not draw one. You should be able to tell me the six pairs of sides and angles that are congruent right now without even needing a diagram. How? Remember how you write it in a specific order. So all the angles and sides match up. So let's go to six different people right now. And you tell me the different sides and angles that match up and will now be congruent because the triangles are congruent. Here we go, let's start us off. Here we go, 14. Yep. There you go. There's one pair. And you guys can go angles or sides, I don't care. Go in any order you want. 10. Yep, perfect. All right, rolling right along here. 17. There we go. Okay, four. Now let's go angles. It looks like five. Yep. 17. And the sixth and final pair up here, it's one. There you go. All right. Why is this all true? You guys have a little conclusion down at the bottom or right uh, below this, which we're going to put. If two triangles are, what do I have to know about them? Congruent. There corresponding, what are we calling these? Corresponding parts are congruent. Now, do I want you to write that? At, who wants to really write that in a reasons column every single time we need it? Uh, let me check. Nobody does. All right, so we do have a shorthand. This is the most classic shorthand we will use all year. It is at the top of your paper. Everybody ready? C, P, C, T, C. What's it all stand for? Corresponding, Corresponding parts in congruent triangles are congruent. C, P, C, T, C, let it roll off your tongue right now. Okay, this can be used any homework, quiz, Test, midterm, regents exam, that can be used. The only thing you want to watch out for, if you do end up using it and don't want to write out the entire conclusion there, if you want to use CPCTC, yes, I'm going to expect it to be in the correct order with the correct letters, not CTPAXYZ. Okay, please make sure it's CPCTC in the correct order with the correct letters. All right. All right, let's use it in a proof now. Now, just oh, hold on, before we start on the proof, don't start the proof yet. Before we start, a little disclaimer about CPCTC. CPCTC. It is not a method to prove triangles congruent. How many methods do you have? Four, keep it that way. CPCTC should never be a way to make triangles congruent. It is after you prove triangles congruent. So this should never show up in a reasons column until you're done proving triangles congruent. Okay, so step two, three, not gonna show up. All right, it shows up after you prove the triangles congruent. All right, so let's use it. This is a two-part proof here. 
First part, you guys, I think, can do on your own. Prove the triangles congruent for me. Okay, go ahead and prove the triangles congruent. So I'll let you guys work in your groups right now. Prove those two triangles. Good practice for tomorrow, even though this one is, I wouldn't even dare put on a quiz tomorrow because it's way too easy. Okay, so take a minute, go ahead and try to prove those triangles congruent, and then we'll talk. Okay, here, number seven, give me a step you have right now. Number seven, give me a step. There we go. They do share, both triangles share side CD. All right, so right now I have two pairs of sides. I have two pairs of sides. I can predict what you should be giving me next because it's 17. There we go, definition of a midpoint. Congruent, congruent. Everyone okay? That's not too bad. And then finally, I think we have enough information now to prove the triangles congruent. And which one of the four methods are we shooting for here? Five? Side, side, side. Everyone have that ability? It's going to be a little tougher tomorrow, but side, side, side. Now that you've proven the triangles congruent, what do I know about all the angles and all the sides that correspond? They're congruent. So take a look at what I'm asking for in part B. Why is ACD, take a look where ACD is, and angle BCD going to be congruent? Well, these are it's those two angles there. Are those corresponding parts? What do you know about the triangles? They're congruent, so those corresponding angles have to be congruent. And this is the next step we're taking these proofs. And my reason, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, CPCTC. We okay? All right, here you go. I'm gonna let you guys prove the triangles congruent on your own for today, and then we'll talk about the second part. Okay, so go ahead, prove those two triangles congruent for me. I want to make at the end when you guys are determining what method to use here. Do you guys see I gave you two pairs of angles already? You know the third pair has to be sides because it's angle, angle, angle of method. Never will be either. Okay, I'm not, that's not our fifth and final one. All right, I'm not hiding it. It's not never going to be angle, angle. So you know it's got to be a side somewhere. Where was the side in there? Where was the side? Here we go. One, where was the side? By reflexive. Good. All right. Now, here's what I'm worried about. You have enough information. Now you have to determine by what method those two triangles are congruent. And you're deciding between the two we went over yesterday. Side angle, um, excuse me, angle, side angle. Angle, side angle, or angle, angle, side. That's what you have to determine. And how do you determine it? Where is this side, PS and PS? In between or not in between. And when you tell if it's in between or not, you have to go using a single triangle. Don't look at both. You have to look at a single triangle. Because I don't want you guys to think, oh, hey, look, that side right here is in between these two angles here. No, 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 no. You got to take a single triangle. So let's take this one I've highlighted, PRS. Is that side in between the two angles? Absolutely not. So that's now, that will be now angle, angle, side. 
you've got to take it from a single triangle, right, to determine if the side's in between. Them. <coughs> now, part B now, prove SQ and PR. Well, what are SQ and PR? Those are not just sides, but corresponding sides and congruent triangles. So what do I know about them? They're congruent. Notice, this is the second proof we've done. CPCTC is always after I prove the triangle's congruent. Not a method and not before, but after. Questions from you guys. Okay, now let's take the training wheels off. Highly unlikely I'm just going to ask you a part A and a part B. I am going to get right to it and ask you about the segments or the angles. Like in the next one, take a look. Everyone see this is not a part A and a not a part B question. I'm asking to prove the line segments congruent. Only way you're going to prove the line segments congruent is if what are congruent first? Get to it. Get to it. The only way those segments are going to be congruent is if the triangles are congruent first. And I love this proof because I gave you nothing as far as sides and angles here. You got to find all three pair on your own. Anywhere you want to start. Anywhere you want to start. Here we go. 14, anywhere you want to start. Okay, hold on, hold on. You're correct. Just let me jot it down. Angle DAC is congruent to angle ACB. That is correct. Those two angles. Why those two? Why those two? Here we go. One, why those two? As much as you may have despised that unit, it's not going anywhere. All right, we still got to know what alternate interior corresponding look like. Same side interior. Okay, I got a pair of angles. Still need two more pair of something. Two more pair. 14. Any, anything. And I'm just going to leave this here in statement two. Why? Same reason. And you can do that. Okay. Instead of making a new statement three with the same reason, you can put it all there. They, those are alternate interior as well. And I have two sets of parallel lines, so they have to be congruent. So it looks like you ever, haven't got me two pairs of angles. I know darn well the third pair is not going to be another pair of angles. All right, no chance. So hopefully we get some sides now. Get some sides. Here we go, five. There. Yeah. Now just tell me, is that side in between at all? Remember, take one tr look at one triangle only. Is that side in between the two angles you marked? What's my method? Here we go. 20, what's my method? It is in between, which makes it angle, side, angle. The method, just say triangle. Oh, hey, looks like I'm going to need to hear from somebody else. You just can't copy it, right, from the proof statement? What do you got to make sure about when you write it down? What do we got to make? When you write down triangle so and so to try congruent to triangle so, what do you have to make sure of? Corresponding parts match up. So, what is your statement? Here we go, five. Back at it. Okay, hold on. ACB, you said, correct? Congruent to CAD. How do you do here? Let's see. ACB. C-A, not bad, not bad, young one. And then now that the triangles are congruent, 
I know corresponding parts DC and BA are now congruent because of CPCTC, but not until the triangles are congruent. Do you have questions there? Okay, before I let you go on your own, because you only have four proofs tonight, that's it. I want to show you the first proof that you're about to do when I let you go for homework. Okay, just take a look up here. Don't open up any books or anything. I just want to show you something. Does everyone see the proof statement? Prove MJL and KNL are congruent. So if I locate MJL, it's right here. And if I locate KNL, it's right here. We did not have to worry about the following problem because if you look through all the proofs we did, there's two and only two triangles. So it's like, boom, I'm proving those congruent and that is it. Now you have a choice, right? Everyone see a ton of triangles in my diagram. So you're like, which ones do I prove congruent? Because it's just not these two and that's it. You got a choice now. But do you really have a choice? No. Which ones do you think you want to prove congruent? The ones that contain the angles I'm asking for. So in this case, which two triangles do you think you'll try to prove congruent? MJL and LKN, yes. Okay, so if you have multiple triangles in the diagram, prove the ones that correspond to the angles I'm asking for. All right, you're on your own. Here we go. <laughs> 